working for you. Fox 2 News at 6 starts now. Hello, hello. No special glasses needed for us. Welcome to the HD show, 6 o'clock. And uh, this is where you'll find us. I'm Dave Spencer. And I'm Hillary Goldston. You know how it goes when we're not on television. We're right here for you on FoxTwoDetroit.com and, of course, on our Facebook page. And so, of course, you already alluded to it. The thing that everyone is talking about right now is the eclipse coming tomorrow. We're going to check in with our uh, weather authority and meteorologist, Rich Ludeman, who's been tracking it all. You were giving us a little preview just a second ago. We are going to set you straight, Hillary. We got it all. Are you ready? We're ready? Hillary's ready. Dave's ready. You're ready at home. First things first, let's talk about the weather. We do have a warm front uh, building in the western Great Lakes, and this warm front will be sliding across our area late tonight with some showers. You can see some steady rains right now over the south end of Lake Michigan uh, into northern Indiana, but that warm front is on the move. So whatever showers come late tonight, they should be gone by sunrise tomorrow, and then we're setting up for breaks in the clouds tomorrow afternoon. Right now, beautiful out there. We had sunshine early, now we have some high clouds coming in, but these are live pictures from downtown. That's Belle Isle right in the middle of the uh, picture. Sure looks nice. 57 the official high at Metro Airport, 32 the morning low. There are your averages, there are your records. Now notice that record, 10 degrees. It can be quite cold in early April, but that is not the case today. A lot of us are in the middle range of the 50s right now. There is a breeze from the east and southeast. But again, with that sunshine, it's nice. Look at the uh, temperatures where it is raining around Chicago, 48, Green Bay, 50. We're at 54, looking good around Columbus, 60 degrees. So watch that frontal boundary move through uh, tomorrow. I'm going to stop the animation at 3 o'clock. That'll be very close to the peak for the eclipse for us. And you can see breaks in the clouds right over all of lower Michigan into northern Ohio. And then Tuesday afternoon, we'll get that cold front with a chance for a late day storm. But all in all, if we're talking eclipse weather, I think we're going to make out tomorrow. For the rest of tonight, thickening clouds. There will be a few showers late this evening through the overnight. Here's your Monday forecast. The afternoon eclipse peaks at 315. Partly cloudy skies all the way up to 68. It is going to be a mild afternoon. There's the seven-day forecast. The best chance for wet weather this week is going to be Thursday into Friday morning. But let's go back to the eclipse. I want to show you the uh, path of totality. That is where the sun will be completely blotted out. That's just to our south. So I know we've talked about Luna Pier. So that's right at the Michigan-Ohio border. A better chance for that total eclipse from Toledo to Cleveland, out to Erie, PA, and Buffalo. But for us, it starts close to 2 o'clock. The max eclipse for us in Detroit tomorrow is around 314, 315, and then by 430, it's all going to be over. So let's sum up the forecast tomorrow afternoon, partly cloudy skies, but we implore you to be safe. Use the glasses and, and uh, watch it through the safety of the glasses. Don't take any chances. All right, let's talk about the weather app. You can always get the latest forecast on the Fox 2 weather app, and you can download it for free in the App Store and Google Play. Of course, a full check of the forecast tonight on air at 10 o'clock. Dave Hillary, back to you. Thank you very right. much. I know that you'll be our... Uh our eyes and ears back here because we got the weather boys hitting the road for uh, the eclipse coverage. Right. Everything you could ever want right here I on think Fox they're bringing in a bunch streaming? of people, right? Because I know Lori's coming in. I think Stephanie's going to be in. I mean, you guys are stacked. We're maxing out tomorrow. <laughs> it's eclipse galore. Yeah. I heard you're going to be on the moon. Is that true or false? I, I, uh, well, I'm coming in. Okay, come on. That's right. You'll be on the moon? I'm, gonna, I'm going to the moon on a <laughs> special uh, looter rocket. <laughs> We're going to see it from that angle. We're going to have live cameras yeah, on the moon tomorrow. On the moon. How about that? I heard okay. it here first. <laughs> That's not true. Don't we are hold just me kidding. Back. Don't we hold me We are just that. kidding. That is not true. We enjoyed that. We enjoyed the ride, though. Thank, we very thank much appreciate it. Appreciated it. Uh, yeah, they're, they're going to be doing a really good job with that. Uh, lots of angles covered, and you know, my husband and I are going to be going to the path of you totality. Got your glasses? You it's got your glasses? He ordered them like a month and a half ago, <laughs> so we are good to go, and we're going to see it. Should be awesome. We'll we'll uh, protect ourselves, and that's another reminder. I'm surprised he didn't make them. To be honest with you, <laughs> my husband is very crafty. Very that's handy. that's what he that's what he's talking about there. <laughs> All right, well, moving on here, we're going to talk about some other news. Scary moments for people at the Motor City Furry Convention that was being in a held at a hotel in Ypsilanti. It's because a bomb threat forced an evacuation of that building. People, or the person rather, who sent that threat claimed there were bombs in a number of hotel rooms, vehicles, and on the roof. That's according to a threat provided to Fox 2. 
They said those bombs would go off within the hour. Police did search the building, but the threat was deemed not credible. A bomb threat also forced the evacuation of this same convention back in 2023 last year. Fortunately, no one was hurt in either instance. And it's going to be a big week for those following the court case of the parents of the Oxford High School shooter. James and Jennifer Crumbly are slated to be sentenced this week. Yeah, and certainly a big week for them also because they're going to learn their fates. They both face up to 15 years in prison. And as Fox 2's Charlie Langton reports, both parents have their own ideas about what the judge should decide. Sentencing for the Crumley parents will take place here at the Oakland County Courthouse on Tuesday. Not surprisingly, the prosecutor wants the maximum sentence allowed, which would be 10 to 15 years in prison, and the Crumleys want to get out of jail as soon as possible. James Crumley, he wants to do time served. He's already done about two and a half years in jail. He wants out. See if it's going to happen. And Jennifer Crumley, very interesting, wants to be sentenced to house arrest at her attorney's guest house. I haven't really heard of that, but we'll see. In fact, I asked a couple of seasoned criminal attorneys what they thought of the positions of all the parties, and well, here's what they said. 43 to 86 months. Isn't that what I told you yesterday? Yes, you did. In February, after Jennifer Cromley was convicted of involuntary manslaughter, I asked the lawyers at Crips and Silver to get out the sentencing guidelines, and sure enough, they predicted exactly what they would be. I promise you that judge knows walking in there what her sentence is going to be. Well, Judge Cheryl Matthews did preside over two trials and two convictions. There's no way she's going below the guidelines. Not on a case like this. It's just not happening. What about above the guidelines? Well, that that's possible. In Michigan, the judge sets the minimum amount of years the Crumbleys will spend in prison, and the statute sets the maximum, in this case, 15 years. But Jennifer Crumley wants to be sentenced to house arrest in her attorney's guest house. You read that that she wants to be in the guest house. I mean, does that, does she lose credibility? <laughs> yeah. I think I, I got I, the I, I, Yeah, I, I, mean, think, I think. Okay, moving on. James allegedly made some threats against prosecutor Karen McDonald, recorded in the jail. The judge can easily use that as substantial compelling reason to go above the guidelines for disrespect towards the judicial system. Okay, now time for some predictions. 10 to 15. For both. For both. The top of the sentence guidelines. Seven and a half yeah, or so. Yeah, that's what I think. I'm predicting 10 to 15 for Mr. Crumley, top <laughs> of the guidelines for, for Ms. Crumley. <laughs> Okay, we're all over the place. There you have it. Let me just explain what the guidelines are. The guidelines from the state as far as sentencing for that first number are about three and a half to seven years. The prosecutor wants 10 to 15 years. Let's assume for the moment it's 10 to 15 years. That means the Crumleys will do 10 years mandatory in prison and then be eligible for parole. If they were good prisoners, they'll get out after 10 years. But if they were not, they will go to 11, 12, etc. to 15. After 15 years, they'd have to be let out. That's how the Michigan sentencing guidelines work and the sentence as well. Anyway, Judge Cheryl Matthews has a discretion and that will take place Tuesday. Outside the Oakland County Courthouse, Charlie Langton, Fox 2 News. Okay, we're going to stay with uh, the legal news around here and another big case that we've been following. A woman who once was hired to protect and serve the students and teachers in public schools in Detroit has hired an attorney herself and filed a lawsuit against the district with some pretty big allegations. Yeah, the officer claims she was once the highest ranking female on the force, but now she's blowing the whistle on sexual harassment and she says she's out of a job because of it. Fox News' Camila Mary has more on the allegations in this lawsuit. It was, it was humiliating. It was uh, demeaning. Kelly Mays describing the sexual harassment she says she experienced while working as a police officer for the Detroit Public Schools Public Safety Department in June of 2021. First incident, he said, um, he asked me, was I putting it on him? He saw flowers at my desk and I told him uh, flowers were for me. And he said, um, hey, Kelly was putting, on, putting it on these guys. Um, that was the first incident. The second incident, he, um, he asked me, was I putting it on this other guy? Um, he asked that right in front of the chief. The third incident, he asked me, what did I have down there? Gold. May says those comments came from the man who was deputy police chief at the time. The veteran police officer is now suing the school district for a million dollars, alleging sexual harassment and wrongful discharge. She says she complained to the police chief about the alleged harassment after it occurred and was told it would be taken care of. 
Then I reached out to the OIG, that's the um, Office of Inspector General. Um, they conduct investigations. I let them know what was going on. Nothing was done. Um, I contacted employee relations, labor relations, my union, nothing was done. Kelly then suffered a series of cascading negative consequences, demotion, she was assigned from the day shift to the afternoon shift, um, she was denied um, the opportunity to become a lieutenant, um, deputy chief. And then ultimately she was terminated from her job last month. What's notable about the termination is that um, the very people that Kelly had complained to about the sexual harassment and who did nothing about it were the ones who fired her based on false charges. And in addition to wanting her old job back. Um, I like them to address um, accountability. People need to be held accountable for their actions and let them know that this is not, it's not tolerated and it won't, it won't be tolerated. You'll face, you'll face some kind of consequences for those actions. Now we reached out to the school district for comment, but so far we have not heard from anyone. Camille Amiri, Fox 2 News. Right, well, we've talked about this for a very long time. Homelessness is a big problem in our community and a wellness center helping women who have a place to stay if they're experiencing homelessness has now opened. The Jackson Transitional Housing Center is a licensed community comprehensive wellness center set up to help all kinds of women in all kinds of situations. It has 25 beds. JTHC provides temporary emergency housing and they also provide a safe and clean environment for these women to relax and recuperate. I am just so, 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 so excited. This is my passion. I've been waiting for this and I am excited. This is a nice place. This is not a shelter. This is not a center. This is a house. They are not homeless. They are residents of JTHC. Well, certainly the leader there is trying to completely reframe the narrative around homelessness. The residents have access to 24 hour advocacy, support and resources. They want the women to have increased income, permanent housing and the skills they need to succeed. Well, it's a week away. Many book lovers look forward to it. Bookstock is back at Laurel Park Place in Livonia. I love to read, so I love seeing this. Well, this has thousands of gently used books and they're now available at deep, deep discounted prices. Fox 2 Zingard Kelly takes us to Bookstock. It's a big day for little Lauren Posey. I'm so excited for my birthday because like I get presents just like on Christmas. At the top of her list, books and lots of them. And in preparation for her birthday on April 8th, Lauren and her grandmother are shopping at Bookstock, where thousands of gently used books being sold at bargain prices line the walkway at Laurel Park Place from now until April 14th. I think it's exciting. It's exciting. And her mother always read to her out loud, and that just like made all the difference in the world. Organizers of this event, which benefits charities agree. This is all about literacy. Across the previous 19 years, we've distributed more than $3 million, all of it to literacy and education projects. And this event is not just about books. You can also find your favorite records and CDs. We have tons of vinyl this year, audio books, which are always popular, CDs, DVDs, comic books, sheet music. Many students at Detroit Public Schools Community District are directly impacted by the money generated from this initiative. City Year uh, Inside Out are both organizations that work with district students and Bookstock supports those organizations. During this year's Bookstock event, some DPSCD students will have yet another opportunity to increase their love of reading thanks to a generous donation from the owner of ABC Transportation and the DPSCD Foundation. We are also bringing out six classes of fourth graders who submitted essays. Whether they won or not, we don't know but they will come out with the ability to pick 10 books of their choice at no cost. It's a win-win for many as book lovers find their treasured reading material at discounted rates, and then that money helps put a book in the hand of someone else in need. Anytime a student is able to read a book, uh, it impacts them in some way, shape, or form, whether it exposes them to new words, new ideas, new places, new ways of thinking. I, I, I just firmly believe that access to books does all of those things. In Livonia, Ingrid Kelly, Fox 2 News.